seven common mistakes to avoid when using GoToLister. And the first mistake, I hope you guys don't make this one, but I notice a lot of people making this mistake outside of GoToLister, but hopefully if you're using GoToLister, not going to make this mistake because it's super, super non-lucrative to make this mistake. And that's not labeling your products. You should be 100% labeling your products. Whether you're selling books or other products, you're paying Amazon 15 to 30 cents to label products for you. So when you create your batch on GoToLister, be sure to put that you're going to label the products. And I recommend getting a Rolo printer right here. And the cheapest labels, house labels, I'll, I'll link these below. I'll link a whole tutorial on how to list and all the supplies I use below. But if you don't label your products, it literally look how simple this is. One, two, three. I can scan them in. Oh, first I got to select the scan box. Let's do this again. Three, two, one. Boom. And the labels are going to print out. Literally every time one of these labels comes out, that's like 30 cents back in my pocket. So right here, I take this label. Boom. I mean, you could deduct the cost of the label. Let's say I paid three cents for the label. I'm still saving 27 cents. So definitely label your products. At scale, you know, for every thousand products you send in, you're paying Amazon $300 to label your products. So don't make that mistake. Mistake number two is not using smart pricing and our pricing notifications. So there's two kind of things going on here. Smart pricing automatically prices your faster selling books at higher prices. If you're not a bookseller, smart pricing, it may help you a little bit, but this is really optimized for booksellers. I mean, honestly, it'll help all products for real because all smart pricing does is price your faster moving books at higher prices. And if you're listing products like this, it's just going to list them a little bit higher. But for all categories, books and other products, you're really going to want to look at our pricing notifications. So pricing notifications are, we tell you when there's no FBA offers, we tell you when there's no offers at all. That way, you know, you know, if you're selling this book and there's no FBA competition, you can easily price this 20% higher. And smart pricing automatically does that for you. That's why I recommend you use smart pricing. But within the batch, I'll give you guys an example here. Talmud 22. This is a Jewish set that I sold years ago. And I sold this set for $700 more than the lowest price. And the reason why I was able to get that premium was because I sent my book FBA and everybody else was selling it merchant fulfilled. Now, I don't recommend pricing your item $700 more than everyone else. I just kind of got lucky in this case, honestly. But at the same time, I don't really think I got that lucky because like, I think synagogues have a lot of money. And I was just using, not common sense, but I guess intuition. I'm like, some synagogue, forgive me, uh, I, I'm going to say preacher. I know it's not that. It's, it's something else. Some person that runs synagogue is going to want this set of books in two days. And so I priced mine at $700 higher than the lowest price because it was already like a $2,000 book or a $1,300 book. I sold mine for $2,000. And... The only reason why I did that was because there's no other FBA competition. So what we've done at GoToLister is we tell you when there's zero FBA offers. So whether you're selling books, other categories, if there's no FBA competition, you should probably price your item at least 20% higher. That means if you're sending in a $100 book, there's no FBA competition, at least price it at 120 And if it's a really fast moving book, I would probably price it at 130 140 It's not uncommon to get a 50% or even a 100% bump we call it the prime bump because you're selling your item prime. Everyone else is not. And so definitely like before you close out your batch, look for any of these zero FBA offer notifications or even better, no offers at all. If there's no offers at all, that means you get to name the price. I recommend learning how to read Keepa, go look at Keepa graphs and look at the price history, what it used to sell for. Since there's no offers, there's nothing to base it off of. But those are two different price notifications you want to look out for. And if, if you're a bookseller, Use smart pricing, guys. Smart pricing is going to tell you what offer it's comparing to right here. So in this case, we match buy box. Here we went 10% below Amazon. So smart pricing is doing this automatically for you. And here we went to FBA offer two. It's always really good when you see that. And remember, guys, you can hover over here and easily toggle your prices. You can see all the FBA offers, all the used offers, everything else. Anyway, I'm yapping too much. Let's move on to the next point, which is... Not taking advantage of the queuing feature. So if you're a bookseller using GoToLister, this is not as important for other sellers, but we have queuing technology, guys. So watch this. If I scan this book right here, look how long it takes Amazon to give the response. 
we're coming up on five seconds, six, seven. That took a while. And that's very annoying. And when I was traveling the country, I was up in the Northeast and I, I thought it was a Wi Fi connection, but no, it's Amazon sometimes really slow. So you, your Wi Fi might be slow. That's number one. Amazon's always slow. You just saw how long it took to make that label. So what we've done at GoToLister is we've allowed you to queue your scans in. So watch this. I can scan 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I can scan all those in before Amazon even gives one response. And so what I recommend doing is stack five books, label five, stack five, label five, stack five, label five. You have a wife or a husband, have them sit next to you. Boom, scan five super fast, move on. Scan five super fast, move on. The reason why, why we do five is just in case you, know, you might be restricted in the product or something crazy happens. Oh my gosh, my printer's going all kind of, kind of crazy over here. That's what I get for not setting my roller product. I'm not using a, what's it called? A little holder for it. So it's just sucking everything in. But uh, yeah, that's definitely take advantage of our queuing feature. We built this for a reason. I think this is one of the most exciting things about GoToLister. Mistake number four is not using our box content feature. Now, the first reason why you want to use box contents is if you don't provide Amazon box contents, they're going to charge you 15 cents per item. And that fee is only going to go up. And during Q4, they actually charge you 30 cents per item. So this quickly adds up. Also, rumor has it that if you use box contents, since you're telling Amazon which items are in which box, they actually check your shipments in faster because they know what items they're expecting. And overall, it is an easier workflow. So they don't have time to get completely in depth about the different workflows I recommend. But basically, there's two. There's a one box method, which is we create a batch, we scan enough items to fit in one box, we close it out. And in that case, if Amazon does not split the shipment and everything's in one box, we're just going to close the batch. And what you can click on is add everything to one box on my video editor, put this here. And then essentially you're providing Amazon box contents for that one box, which makes it a very simple flow. But if you're getting split shipments, multiple warehouse destinations, the box content flow allows you to view all the warehouse destinations that the items are going to. And our goal with box content flow is to beef up all those different destinations and easily combat split shipments. So let's say you listed 150 books. Rather than listing 50 books and having two books go somewhere and 27 books go somewhere else and then 31 books go somewhere else, if you're beefing up the shipments to a size of 150 plus, then maybe you'll have 20 go to one warehouse, 30 go to another, and then the other 100 go somewhere else. So the idea with the box content flow is to eliminate the stress of split shipments, eliminate the fees that Amazon charges you. So I highly recommend you watch the video below on how to use box content flow. You definitely want that in your arsenal. And if you live in a part of the country where split shipments are happening all the time to you, you should probably only ever do box content flow. Everybody should always do box content flow because try the one box method first. If the one box method doesn't work, you know, enough items fit in one box, then list five boxes worth of items, which is like 150 plus items. And then use the box content flow. It's a super simple flow and it's a big mistake to not use that. Mistake number five is not tracking your buy cost or sources. This is super important. Not only for tax season, GoToLister pretty soon is going to have a one-click button to download a report that you can hand over to your CPA that's in the pipeline for 2024. But it's also just helpful to know, like, are you making good purchasing decisions? How is your business running overall? And if you guys didn't know, uh, first of all, you can add your buy cost here. So if you're a bookseller, what I recommend you do is if you have 100 books on your list and you pay $200 for those books, just divide 200 by 100 and get $2 per book just on average what you paid for each book. If you're listing products like beauty products or any other online arbitrage or wholesale product, you 100% want to be very meticulous with how much you paid on a per product basis. That way you can see, are you making profitable purchasing decisions or not? So track your buy costs within the batch. Also track where you got the product from. That way uh, you, you know what your most profitable sources are. We're going to come out with some pretty cool source reports in the future as well. So keep, keep an eye out for that. So if we go to orders here, so if you click on the orders tab, you can see how much we sold the product for, how much we paid for the product. 
you can actually see a breakdown of the fees if you hover over fees here. So we have 428 and 432. So the referral fee is how much Amazon always charges 15% referral fee. And then FBA fees is how much they charge. Put it in a box for you. And then profit, you can see a complete breakdown here. So we made $6.51 profit for this item selling. We made $24 profit here. And so we're making good purchasing decisions. Like the ROI and margin on these products is really good. And we know this because we entered the buy cost in, or actually I had my, my team enter the buy cost in, and then we sent this to my wholesale supplier. So uh, definitely track your buy cost there. And then it's also going to come really handy because then you can, you can click on the profit tab. This is going to show you what your sales are, how much you paid for those products that did sell, how much Amazon charged you in fees for those associated products selling, and what your total profit is. So yeah, 46,000 sales sound great. If I'm out salsa dancing, talking to girls, I can say, oh, I have sold 46,000 on Amazon. They're really impressed. But really what I should be telling them is I've sold 17,000 true profit is what I'm making. Not as impressive, but still not bad, you know? So I would definitely, you know, if you're at the salsa club and you're going to brag about anything, don't pull up the sales, pull up the profit so they know that you're truly, you know, capable of providing for them. All right. That's a rant. That's another topic at the end of the day, but you guys get the point. You want to know what are you truly making? And some people aren't making money on Amazon. And if you're using GoToList and you track the profits, you do all that, you're going to be able to really track how much profit, how much money you're making and make better purchasing decisions overall. You don't, well, you don't want to fly blind in this business. You want to make sure that you're making good purchasing decisions. Mistake number six is not tracking your stats on your smartphone like a madman. So go to listers mobile friendly. You can pull this up and you can easily see what your true profit is each month, what your sales are, all at the glimpse of the dashboard on the main page. You can see what your average sales price is. As a bookseller, you should try to keep a high average sales price. Make sure that your sell-through rate's good. We tell you how many items you've sold and all you got to do is divide that by how much inventory you have to get your sell-through rate. So let's just say you've sold 1,000 items in the last 30 days and you have 4,000 items total in stock. Your sell-through rate is 25%, which is pretty good for a bookseller. If you're selling other categories, you probably aim for 50% plus. You can also see your most recent batches and how much profit each batch made you. And I like to check this pretty often. And I personally like to check my orders on GoToLister, even though the orders page isn't perfect yet, mobile friendly, but I do like to see what's been selling. So if you click on the orders page, if you click on the orders page, you can easily see what products are selling. And if you scroll to the right, you can easily see how much profit you're making. I personally check this like multiple times a day on my phone. I know it's not the most mobile friendly yet, but in the future, we'll probably have an app for this or we'll just make the website way more mobile friendly. But that front page, that dashboard is extremely mobile friendly. And the more you check your stats, the better pulse you're going to have on your business and ultimately make better decisions as time goes on. Mistake number seven is not taking advantage of our replacement feature. So this is really important for non-book sellers. If you're a book seller, don't have to worry so much about this. But if you're a non-book seller and you want to track how profitable each ASIN is, you want to make sure you're using the same SKU per ASIN. So if you're listening to a bunch of this product and you bought some last March, and you bought some more in December, and you bought some more this January, you want to make sure that you're using the same SKU each time by clicking on auto replenishments within the batch. It's going to use the most recent SKU. And if you're not sure what the SKU is, you can always head on over to inventory and actually look through inventory, click on the inventory tab and just search and find what SKU you used previously. You can copy and paste that into the batch. And then if you're going to do that way, just be sure to click on, uh, use manual SKUs, and this is going to give you the option just to paste that SKU in right there. But the whole point is you want to be using the same SKU. That way, you can go to inventory and you can click on the item. So click on inventory, find the item that you replenish, and you can see the whole sales history. So for this one product, we've sold $24,000 worth of this one product. We can see what our average unit price is. And so this now has a whole story behind this one product. And we can see every single time we replenished it. We replenished it in October uh, 22nd of 2023. We, we replenished it again in December 14th, then another time, December 28th, and just recently February 5th. And we can see what we paid each time. You can see we actually paid a little bit more for it one time. So the benefit of using GoToLister and this replenishment feature is now you have a story of how much you paid for the product each time because maybe you use a coupon code one time, or maybe your supplier gave you a discount. You want to be very precise 
with the price you're putting in. That way you truly know what your real profit is at the end of the day on a per product level and also bookkeeping as a whole. So this is a really cool feature we have. As long as you use the same SKU, when you click on inventory and click on the exact SKU, it's going to show you the story behind replenishing. If you if you need to, if you came from another software and you want to track previous purchases, like let's say you came from Inventory Lab and you made three purchases over the last three months before you switched to go to a list, or you can simply click on add replen here and put those times that you purchased a product just so the story of the product exists here. And we're going to pull all this info from Amazon regardless. So if you have 200 in stock, you just signed up for GoToLister. GoToLister is going to know you have 200 in stock because we're pulling all this from Amazon's API. So those are the seven mistakes to avoid. Seven mistakes to avoid when using GoToLister. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.